Welcome to the Getting Started with OpsWorks for Chef Automate video series. I'm Nick Reichar, Technical Product Marketing Manager at Chef. And in this first video, spinning things up, I'll walk you through an overview of the Chef Automate platform, some of the benefits to deploying with OpsWorks for Chef Automate, and a demonstration of just how quickly you can get a Chef Automate server of your own running in Amazon Web Services. Now, before we can dive into OpsWorks, it's important to start with an overview of Chef Automate itself. Chef Automate is an enterprise platform that collects data from Chef's three open source automation engines. Inspec for automating security and compliance audits, Chef for automating your infrastructure configurations, and Habitat for automating application build and release. By aggregating this data into filterable dashboards, Chef Automate provides a unified view into everything you manage in your organization across environments and teams. Chef Automate also provides actionable insights into any misconfigurations or security failures so that you can prepare the proper remediations quickly. Now, Amazon customers can get started automating faster than ever with the release of OpsWorks for Chef Automate, a fully managed Chef Automate server hosted by AWS. OpsWorks for Chef Automate not only provides a one-click way to spin up a Chef Automate server, but gives you Amazon-managed backups, maintenance windows, and upgrades so that you can focus on automating your applications and infrastructure and let Amazon handle managing the Chef Automate server itself. But enough preamble. With that, let's dive in and see just how quickly we can get up and running. In the AWS Management Console, OpsWorks can be found within the Management Tools Services group. From there, we can select the Chef Automate Servers menu option, which will display a Create Chef Automate Server button in the upper right-hand corner of the console window. The server creation process consists of four steps. First, we'll need to provide our Chef Automate Server with a name, region, and EC2 instance type. In step two, we can select an existing EC2 key pair from our account to provide SSH access to the Chef Automate server. This will be important if we ever need to change the administrator's password or view system logs. From there, we move on to the advanced setup where we can select the VPC and network subnet into which our Chef Automate server will be deployed. We can also select whether it should be added to any security groups, service roles, or instance profiles. Finally, we can set up a one-hour window for a weekly maintenance tasks and configure the frequency, start time, and keep count for automated system backups. The final step is simply to review these settings and launch our Chef Automate server. As Amazon deploys our server, we can download a CSV file with our login credentials, as well as a starter kit, which, when extracted, provides a working directory for Chef development with configuration files and authentication credentials preloaded. Be sure to download these items before closing this window, as they can be regenerated but not recovered after this point. Finally, while our server is deploying, we'll want to make sure we download and install Chef Workstation, which provides everything we'll need to start interacting with our Chef Automate server. Chef Workstation can be downloaded from chef.sh and can be installed on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux systems. To save you time, the download link will auto-detect your running operating system and download the appropriate installation file. Once our Chef Automate server deploy completes, we can validate that we're able to authenticate both via the web user interface and via the command line utilities provided by Chef Workstation. Now that our deploy is complete, Let's start by making sure our command line tools are working. After installing Chef Workstation, we can open a new terminal or PowerShell window and navigate to the starter kit directory. Future videos will cover the starter kit components in depth, but for now, we're just going to confirm our ability to authenticate with our OpsWorks server with a utility called Knife. From the starter kit directory, running the command knife client list should display our default validator client if everything is configured correctly. With our starter kit looking good, it's time to log in via the web. 
Clicking the button next to our Chef Automate Server and Dashboard Endpoint URL will take us to its login page in a new tab. From here, we can copy the username and password from our CSV file and make sure we're able to log in successfully. Once we're logged in, we'll have a few tabs available to us, though we're not yet sending Chef Automate any data. The Nodes tab will show us the configuration details of our estate and provide us with filterable insights into the changes Chef makes each time it checks in. The Compliance tab is where we'll see compliance reports generated by InSpec. These scans can be run as part of a Chef client run or as a standalone agentless audit executed over SSH or WinRM. The Workflow tab provides a pipeline for promoting updates to Chef code. Updates can be automatically tested and deployed environment by environment for continuous delivery of automation code. Finally, the Admin tab provides facilities for adding, importing, and removing users and managing their privileges within Chef Automate. Our next video will focus on compliance and we'll see how we can start auditing our systems immediately thanks to Chef Automate's built-in profile store. Well, that about wraps up part one. If you'd like to learn more about the OpsWorks platform, be sure to check out the AWS documentation. And for some hands-on experience managing AWS resources with Chef, look no further than Learn Chef Rally and the Chef on AWS tutorial track. And of course, be sure to join us next time where we'll be covering some of the compliance features in OpsWorks for Chef Automate. Until next time, take care.